sure something you don't see every day. I tried to think of the most harmless thing. Something I loved from my childhood. Something that could never, ever possibly destroy us. Mr. Stay Puft. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 weirdest movie plot twists. Correction! The new improved Scrappy! Ah, because I, Scrappy Dappy Doo, have absorbed enough energy to... Now! To rule the world with my all-powerful army! We've given him the power. The gift of Thorn. I am its deliverer. I follow it. Act as its guardian. I protect Michael. Watch over him. For this list, we're looking at on-screen twists that aren't necessarily bad, but they're certainly strange. Since we'll be talking about key plot points and endings, a spoiler alert is in order. Let us know which of these twists you found the weirdest in the comments below. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Appointment with the Wicker Man. The Wicker Man. This remake's twist wasn't entirely out of the blue, as its 1973 predecessor also climaxed with a human sacrifice. Yet the 2006 version of The Wicker Man makes matters infinitely weirder. Even if you knew that the film would end with a giant Wicker Man statue, nobody expected to see Nicolas Cage in a bear suit or Ellen Burstyn wearing Braveheart makeup. Where the original's ending was over the top yet eerily quiet, the remake's ending plunges itself into madness. You will sit beside the gods and goddesses for all of eternity. Back up! I swear to God I will shoot you! Cage embraces that madness, screaming his way to a Razzie nomination. This is murder! And you're doing it for nothing! Killing me won't bring back your goddamn honey! As the neo-pagans restrain Cage's Edward, they hobble him and shower him with bees before burning him alive. What, what is that? What is that? What is it? Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! What makes this twist especially outlandish is the motivation behind the sacrifice. Honey, talk about a sticky situation. Number 9. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man – Ghostbusters See, we told you that not every twist on this list was bad. When it comes to comedic curveballs, Ghostbusters set a gold standard with its climax, in which our heroes are asked to choose a form for the villainous Gozer. What do you mean, choose? We don't understand! Choose. Choose the form of the Destructor. While the other Ghostbusters attempt to block out their thoughts, Ray can't help but think about something wholesome. The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. There's something you don't see every day. I tried to think of the most harmless thing. Something I loved from my childhood. Something that could never, ever possibly destroy us. Mr. Stay Puffed. A combination of the Michelin Man and Poppin' Fresh might not sound very menacing, but when he's beefed up to kaiju size, well, it's bad news for humanity. Sorry, Bankman. I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. Although a bag of Stay Puffed Marshmallows was previously seen in Dana's apartment, we never thought that this corporate mascot would have such a massive part. It's beyond the capacity for rational thought. Number 8. Martin's Secret – The Secret of Nim 2 – Timmy to the Rescue we weren't sure what to expect from this straight-to-video sequel, but we definitely didn't anticipate this third-act twist. Arriving at NIM, Timmy and his friends find the human scientists and other mice brainwashed. Dr. Valentine! Pitch! <gasps> and who's the diabolical mastermind behind this plot? Why, Timmy's older brother Martin, of course. When he got captured, Martin was subjected to experiments that turned him evil not to mention British and musically inclined. I was far too smart from the very start. Martin plans to take over Thorn Valley because, oh, what difference does it make? 
This big reveal is bonkers. We can rule the world together! If you come with me, you'll be happy. Oh, so happy when you come with me. Maybe we could accept this twist in an episode of Chippendale Rescue Rangers, but in a secretive Nim movie, we'd need to drink some serious Kool-Aid. Just say no. Number seven, the Rubik's Cube. Dude, where's my car? This comedy starts with two stoners attempting to locate their missing car. Dude, where's my car? Where's your car, dude? It's quirky but seemingly grounded in reality. As their search continues, though, things get strangely supernatural. I'll tell you who's laughing now. We are! Soon we will leave this lame planet and fly through outer space with cool aliens who like us. By the end, it's less about finding the car and more about finding an alien device called the Continuum Transfunctioner. Do you have the Continuum Transfunctioner or not? All the while, Chester attempts to solve a Rubik's Cube that he found in his suit. What seems like a throwaway running gag is actually integral to the plot. Finishing the Rubik's Cube unlocks the Continuum Transfunctioner's true form. We're not sure if this twist was well plotted or completely random. In any case, it's certainly a bizarre twist, and the weirdness only escalates with the formation of a super hot giant alien. Whoa! That is one super hot giant alien! Number 6. Aliens Did It The Forgotten Granted, the trailer did kind of spoil this nutty twist. For those who went into the forgotten blind, however, the movie probably didn't go in the direction that they were anticipating. The film begins as a psychological thriller with Julianne Moore's Telly being the only one who remembers her departed son. Sometimes the mind needs help in letting a thing go. You expect me to let go of my son? The deeper that Telly and another parent dig, it appears that there may be a conspiracy going on beneath the surface. Now listen to me, what do we know? I had a son, you had a daughter, they had lives, they died, and everyone besides us believes they never existed. What could do something like that? It turns out that the conspiracy is actually happening above, as an agent is pulled up into the sky by some alien force after breaking his silence. They're listening. For many, this revelation is where the film started to get just a little too silly and surreal. I believe you, Telly. I believe you about everything. I've seen it. It's not human. Jesus Christ. And the children? Yes, everything. We'll find them. I promise you that. Do you hear me? We will find them. We will find your son! Love it or hate it, it's a twist that you'll never forget. You need to work here! Number five, Puppy Power, Scooby Doo. Yeah. But every family has one nut. Ah, scrappy Deppy Doo! Ray! Ghosts don't stand a chance with me! You'd be hard pressed to find an adult who sincerely likes Scrappy Doo. Heck, even a lot of kids find Scooby's little nephew to be obnoxious. Scrappy, for the thousandth time, there's no such thing as ghosts. Sure there are! And when I find them, I'll give them a good dose of puppy power! Still, never in a million years did we expect the big reveal of a ruthless villain to be scrappy. Yet in this live-action adaptation of the animated franchise, the villainous robot is indeed being controlled by Scrappy. Correction! The new improved Scrappy! Ah, because I, Scrappy Dappy Doo, have absorbed enough energy to... Now! To rule the world with my all-powerful army! Yes. Turning to evil after the gang ditched him, Scrappy absorbs enough souls to turn himself into a giant monster. Scrappy-Doo and demon cults. On the one hand, it makes no sense. On the other hand, it makes too much sense. Either way, you don't need to be a member of Mystery Inc. to understand why this twist is weird. Number 4. By the way, Joe is a ghost. Safe Haven. For a majority of its runtime, Safe Haven is a typical Nicholas Sparks adaptation with a small town romance and a one-note villain. How many times do you have to hear me say I'm sorry? After her husband gets his just desserts, Katie settles down with Alex and his children. If the movie ended there, it would likely blend into the crowd. Thank you for being such a good friend. You 
deserve this, Katie. You belong here. In the last few minutes, however, Katie learns that a neighbor she befriended is actually Alex's late wife. To the woman my husband loves. If you're reading this, then it must be true. He loves you beyond a shadow of a doubt. That's right, Katie was talking to a ghost the whole time. Not only does this twist come out of almost nowhere, but it contributes little to the plot. Outside of my husband and my two beautiful children, you are the most important person in the world to me. You could leave it on the cutting room floor and nothing would be lost. Of course, we would lose a twist that's so absurd that we oddly admire it. Number three, the Druid Curse, Halloween, the Curse of Michael Myers. We guess it's debatable if this is really a twist, seeing how the title clarifies up front that Michael Myers is cursed. If you'd been following the Halloween franchise since 1978, though, hearing this title came as something of a shock. Originally, Michael seemed like a boogeyman who could exist in the real world. Watching this film, we learned that the runic symbol of Thorn was apparently used to curse Michael, turning him into an immortal being driven to end his bloodline on Halloween. We've given him the power, the gift of Thorn. I am its deliverer. I follow it. Act as its guardian. I protect Michael. Watch over him. The mysterious man in black is revealed to be Dr. Terence Wynn, who's been pulling Michael's strings from the get-go. Given the response to this convoluted new direction, we can see why it was retconned multiple times. Kill for him. <sighs> Number two, Puberty Love, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. How exactly do you end a movie called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Across the length and breadth of the nation, the tomatoes continue on their rampage of wanton destruction, burning. <laughs> Pillaging. With a twist that's every bit as ridiculous as the title, obviously. As the killer tomatoes paint the town red, our heroes discover the key to stopping them, playing an ear-piercing song entitled Puberty Love. We didn't realize that tomatoes had ears. Then again, we didn't realize that tomatoes could be cannibalistic either. For some reason, the music makes the tomatoes shrink, allowing people to crush them like... Well, tomatoes. <laughs> the weirdest thing of all, Puberty Love was sung by a young Matt Cameron, a future drummer for Pearl Jam. A similar twist would be used in Mars Attacks, as Slim Whitman's Indian love call causes alien heads to literally explode. <laughs> Before we unveil our strangest number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Lori is Michael's sister, Halloween 2. Yep, that got retconned too. That girl, that strode girl, that's Michael Myers' sister. Hail to the Chimp, Planet of the Apes. You maniacs, you blew it! Just add water. Signs. We didn't forget about you, Shyamalan. <laughs> Gale framed himself. The life of David Gale. Um, you really showed them, Mr. Gale. The footage appears to show Constance Haraway committing suicide. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. It's a computer game. Serenity. The opening of Serenity is full of melodrama, cheesy lines, and Matthew McConaughey at his most McConaughey. I see him. Think, eh? think the beast is close. About 40 minutes in, the audience may think that they have a grasp on this movie's universe. Then we learn that this is all a computer game. Uh, did the Vanilla Sky screenwriter hijack this movie? We are now on pause. You're about to return to your lucid dream. 
pause. With all the upgrades, you won't remember any of this and nor will you be charged for the technical support. Adding to the craziness, McConaughey's character is dead in real life and this game was designed by his young son Patrick. Why? Because Patrick's mother remarried a cruel man. The boy's stepfather, Frank Zariakis, a construction worker, was found with a single knife wound to the chest. Patrick's mother, Karen Zariakis, claimed she and her son had been the victims of domestic violence for many years. Apparently, beating the game gives Patrick the confidence to take out his stepfather. Even if that made sense, it still wouldn't explain why Patrick created a simulated reality where his parents get it on and his father is a hooker without a hook. Baker, Dill, you're no more than a hooker. Hooker who can't afford hooks. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.